Hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this video, I want to talk about the benefits of using a functional programming language over uh, object-oriented language and how you can make that transition a lot better. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the f -sharp programming language. Just to introduce myself at first, my name is Ben Gobey. I used to be a team lead at uh, Genetech. It's a software company working on security systems. And uh, I, I recently really wanted to make this YouTube channel because I started using F Sharp and learning F Sharp and I wanted to uh, just give a, a much better experience of learning the language so that everybody can enjoy its benefits. So what is F Sharp? F Sharp is a statically typed functional first programming language that's based on the .NET uh, framework. So it's uh, backed by Microsoft. It was originally a port, or it's heavily inspired, I should say, uh, by the program language OCaml, which is an ML language. But now it's kind of its own thing, and uh, it's open source, and there's a lot of uh, new features that, that people can use and uh, really enjoy. So this is kind of the summary, kind of catch-all phrase to describe F Sharp. It's obviously a lot more complex than that, and we're gonna walk through all the language features in the subsequent videos. This is basically an introduction video of just presenting what it is and why you want to use it. And I'm really excited to create more content to really help the learning curve to smoothen it out and to show all, all uh, what you can do with it because it's really cool. All the libraries that it can be used, you can use on the web, on mobile, and uh, your back end. Uh, it's really, really powerful. So what are the benefits of using F -sharp to program instead of an OOP language like C -sharp? And obviously there's a lot of pro uh, functional programming languages out there. Uh, I'm only going to be talking about F Sharp in this one, uh, just talk about its benefits. But a lot of these benefits can, benefits can be found with other functional programming languages and the, the paradigm itself. So the three main benefits are productivity, uh, immutability, like uh, the, really the, the, the safety of it, and uh, the fault tolerance you could say. Um, and for F Sharp, really the, the, the .NET interop. So when we talk about productivity in F Sharp, there's a lot of things we can talk about. The first one, and maybe it's not the biggest one, but it's obviously the syntax. So if you're used to, uh, let's say Java or C Sharp, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. You got the you know, public, static, uh, open curly brace. Uh, you have semicolons. Uh, you know your arguments are, are comma separated, and all that stuff is is not really there in F Sharp. You really have. Uh, you know, a space separated list for parameters. You use white space tokens to uh, determine what scope you're in. Very reminiscent of uh, Python. Now that's a lot of boilerplate that actually goes away just for, for those reasons. Also, uh, what's really cool, it's there's a type inference. All, all your method signatures, you know, you basically don't have to specify the types of your parameters or your return types in 90% of, uh, of the occurrences. So that really, really helps with uh, you know, the reading and, and all that stuff. Or the writing also. <laughs> Obviously the writing, you don't have to write as much. Especially for generics. If let's say you have a, you have a method that takes the third element of a list, no matter, you know, you, you have a list of T, we don't have to uh, specify T in this occurrence because it's just inferred and so we'll say, yeah, whatever, it's a generic. So that's a lot of time that, that you save writing code. It's really, really enjoyable to work with. This is probably the biggest uh, productivity gain of uh, F Sharp is its type system. So basically its type system is uh, very different from uh, C Sharp. It's uh, an algebraic type system. So you have two kind of new types that are, are different to uh, C Sharp or, or any other object oriented language. You have a record type and a discriminated union. So the record type is basically like a, an immutable class in uh, C Sharp. So you have a constructor, it takes arguments, and uh, you store those arguments as read only, and you have getters. You know, that's basically how it works. But what's really cool is you have structural equality built in, you have structural comparison built in, you have a two string that's not totally useless as opposed to C Sharp, and you have a uh, free deep copy method. That's just built in by default. So we'll talk about why the deep copy is so important uh, in the functional paradigm. But for now, you know, all, all those messages generates a lot of code for you that, that you'll probably use anyways. Uh, not always, obviously, not all the types, but in a functional uh, paradigm, they're more used. That's why they're built in for free. The discriminated union, on the other hand, is, uh, is actually quite different. It, it looks like a, like a enum when you first look at it, but it's actually, um, it's called a choice type, basically. So it's either this or this or that. Like, uh, 
you know, your payment method is either a, a, a card, money, or it's, you know, it's something else. And all those, it's not actually implemented as an enum, it's implemented as a, uh, so the type itself is an abstract class and uh, all its members are, are concrete implementations of the abstract class. And all of these can take different arguments um, and they can take, you know, uh, whatever. We'll talk more in depth of how that, all that works, but these two are really fundamentally different and they really help to make illegal states unrepresentable. So what does that mean? Well, basically, you know, it always happens that you, uh, you know, you pass strings everywhere for, for data and uh, you validate it in, in your entry point. Like, uh, let's say it's a REST API, you validate it at entry and then you don't really use a different data structure. You just keep that string and sometimes you have to revalidate. Oh, is it, you know, is it not empty or null or whatever? And uh, since this type system, not only is it uh, very powerful, you can really make specific classes and types. You can also, it's so cheap to do, uh, you know, they just take one line or two line or a few lines of code, as opposed to uh, uh, C-sharp, you know, you have to create a new file, a new constructor, generate a whole bunch of code. And even if you have ReSharper enabled um, and you're using ReSharper to generate all that code, it's really uh, tedious and uh, it's not all fun to build strong types. And so that's why it's so productive to use F-sharp. It's just the, 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 the cost of doing strong types and really the data types that you want to represent your, your data with, uh, it, it's so much cheaper and better. And lastly, why it's so productive uh, is there's a, uh, a REPL interactive. So the read, uh, read, edit, print, evaluate. Read, execute, print, evaluate. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. It, there's a scripting environment for F-sharp. It's called F-sharp Interactive. It really lets you uh, write and execute as you go along. It's basically like you're writing Python. I believe they added the uh, C-sharp Interactive. I actually never used it in C-sharp. Maybe that's just me. I didn't really think like like that in, in C-sharp as opposed to F-sharp, but you know, it's a lot, a lot usable. So when we talk about immutability, why that's so powerful, it's because, uh, you know, if you're working in concurrent uh, programs, you know, there's multi-threading, there's a you know, different process talking to each other. It's really important to avoid the shared state as much as possible. So when we talk about immutability, everything in F-sharp by default is immutable. So your record types, you know, your, your variables and stuff, nothing can really change unless you specify the immutable keyword. And that's really powerful because if you're working in concurrent environments or concurrent applications, or you know you're just trying to read code and what, see what it does, the fact that it can't the, the value can't change uh, gives you a lot of safety, uh, like really a lot of safety when you code. You don't have to worry about is someone else changing this, or uh, you don't have to worry about you know. Uh, calling this method will it change the state of uh, this object because all that is, you know it's just gone it's just your functions are pure your tests are deterministic and you don't really have any issues on that and it makes programming a lot more productive in the fact that uh, you'll have less bugs uh, most of the time and I've seen that doesn't mean you can never have state in F sharp uh, obviously you can have state you can have uh, mutable stuff you, can, you know since uh, F sharp is like very compatible with C sharp. You can actually write uh, classes too. There, there are different kinds of types. They're like a, a class type, and so that's that's really good too. But uh, you can also uh, use the you know some programming models like the actor model to uh, to keep state. You know, basically the the premise is uh, if you have state in your application, you also want it to have it isolated so only one person can access it at the time. Um, that, that's a big thing with the actor model, which we'll talk about in a subsequent video. Also, when we talk about immutability, uh, one big thing to mention is you can't really initialize something to null unless you explicitly, you know, do it. You have to use an annotation, and uh, you know, there's no nulls. There's basically normal nulls in, in F sharp, which is like, you know, it's. It's like, you know, it's so fun to work with. You don't have to validate all your stuff all the time, and uh, you can just basically assume your data is valid when you're in a method and it crossed your validation boundary of your of your architecture. There's a lot more to talk about, about why uh, why immutability is so good in uh, the context of F-sharp. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it at that and we'll move on to talking about how the .NET interop works. So uh, C-sharp, you know, when it compiles, it compiles down to MSIL like uh, C-sharp and, you know, you can generate a DLL and that DLL is callable uh, via your C# -sharp applications and vice versa. So all your NuGets, all your stuff, you know, you don't lose all that stuff if you uh, 
uh, start writing F# -sharp code. You'll you'll keep all that code, in, and that's that's really one of the benefits of of uh, switching to a functional language like F# -sharp. if you're writing C# -sharp, you you have very little risk. Um, you can still keep all your stuff, and you know gradually start incorporating F# -sharp into your code base. And so there, there's a few strategies of uh, migrating uh, F# -sharp and C# -sharp code together. Uh, specifically, if, when you write F# -sharp and you want to expose it out to the world, if you if you have a lot of these uh, discriminated unions and uh, implicit generic uh, methods, you might want to uh, you might want to have a layer around it to, to expose more primitive types uh, that can be consumed by uh, by C# -sharp really well. But but it really it's a really good experience to to interrupt with .NET. So that's really really a lot of fun. Also with the .NET interrupt, we can also talk about the .NET ecosystem and you know what you've been using for C Sharp can also work with, with F Sharp. So basically, uh, you know if you're using Visual Studio, uh, you know all the toolings there in Visual Studio. There's a, a Power Tools extension you can use. Uh, makes it really fun to develop. Uh, one big uh, community favorite because that one is uh, you know all it works for Windows. You can use um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, with an extension called Ionide for uh, cross-platform development, so it works on, on uh, Linux and Mac as well. And uh, my personal favorite is uh, using uh, Rider by uh, IntelliJ, or no, sorry, <laughs> oops, uh, Rider by uh, JetBrains. And uh, I, I recently tried it, and I really, really enjoy working on IDE. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun. You get refactorings, uh, like usings and stuff, opening stuff, and. Uh, moving to file and all that greatness. So I actually really recommend that one, but Visuals Code and Ionite is a fan favorite as well. So that's about it for this video. Um, in the future videos, we're gonna look at all the language features, the tooling, how to get set up, and uh, how to start coding in F Sharp, and how you should, uh, and eventually we'll work our way up to uh, what are the best practices and how, how should you uh, code some F Sharp. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to click like and uh, to get all the new videos, make sure to click subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell. And uh, in the comments, uh, let me know what kind of project you would like me uh, showing first you, for like a web project or a mobile, like a iOS and Android uh, with uh, F Sharp, super interesting how it's done. Uh, so just let me know what you'd like to see and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick one, all right? So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you next one.